Melanie was in the kitchen. Fifth cup of coffee, almost 3 a.m., and Shannon still wasn't there. It wasn't the first time he could go out until the morning, but it hadn't happened often before. Though lately, it had been happening all the time. Melanie chuckled. Stupid women worry about their husbands cheating. That if he came home late, it means he was with another woman. But she doesn't worry. She knows for sure that her husband can only cheat on her with a bottle of alcohol. Melanie sighed. She hated that her husband was drinking, but she couldn't do anything about it. Shannon thought it was her fault. She tried to control herself, not be bossy at home, but she wasn't always good at it. Shannon said that she was a tyrant, that she didn't hear other people's opinions, and that she was only able to command. Well, their personalities were completely different. As long as the children lived with them, it wasn't emphasized. But when the children grew up and went to different cities to study, all the interpersonal problems of husband and wife came out. How many times Melanie asked him, how many times she cried in a purely feminine way, even though it was not her nature, but nothing helped. Her husband, an intelligent man who was a promising lawyer, was simply drinking himself to death. And if previously he drank at home or at the bar, now he did not care where, with whom, and when to drink. She knew that things were only going to get worse. Her husband had completely lost faith in himself and nothing would get him out of it. When Shannon got drunk, he felt like a thunderer of the seas. Like a king. And every time he tried to prove to Melanie who was the boss. He was bad at it because due to her profession, Melanie knew not only the basics of self-defense but a bit more. But seeing the man she loved trying to hurt her was unpleasant. She felt that she was about to leave him, even though they had lived together for so many years. She heard the key turning in the lock. Finally, he came. Melanie sat quietly, hoping her husband would walk into the room and fall onto the couch, as he often did. But her hopes failed. Shannon was on his way to the kitchen. A moment later, the lights turned on. The husband grinned drunkenly. Oh, who is here? The boss in all her glory. Shannon, aren't you tired of drinking? Come on, honey. How can I get tired of it? You're the one working on a very serious job, and you're the boss, and I'm just nobody. Melanie frowned. She had never boasted about her job in her life. On the contrary, she had always tried to support her husband. But either someone was setting him against her, or he was setting himself so. Shan, could you stop it already? It is impossible to tolerate your drinking every day. Don't you disgust yourself? Shannon hiccuped, tried to pour water into a glass from the faucet, but he spilled it all over. Then, he threw the glass on the floor and almost fell down. Shut up! The man came home. He banged his fist on the table and still fell. Melanie almost cried. Then, she leaned toward her husband. Here's the thing. If you don't want a good way, we'll do this the hard way. She grabbed the phone from the table. Hello, Edward. Send a car to my house right away, and a couple of people who know how to keep their mouth shut. Melanie Porter, did you kill someone in there and need to get rid of the body? Edward laughed. That's almost what happened, Edward. Shannon fell asleep in the car right away. He came to his senses a little as he was being led down the narrow corridors. He turned around and saw Melanie. What the hell was that all about? Nothing, she shrugged. I'm going to lock you up for the night with the women prisoners. The ones who are going to be in prison for the rest of their lives. By the way, three of them are in prison for killing their husbands, who brought them to a nervous breakdown with their drunkenness. Melanie, are you out of your mind? Shannon twitched, but Melanie clenched her teeth. Too late, darling. You don't want to hear me in any other way. Melanie turned away. How tired she was. The door creaked open and she heard the women slighted in the prison cells. She didn't care anymore. How much longer could she tolerate it? Melanie had been the warden of the women's prison for five years. With a fabulous name and delicate appearance, Melanie had an ironclad character. If she was up to something, she was sure to get it done. Shannon somehow sobered up instantly. A single thought was buzzing in his head. My wife's patience is not infinite. Probably I crossed the line. Wow, what a handsome guy they gave us. Why is Melanie so generous? The women approached him. They were all different. Some had the look of a perpetual prisoner. Some looked pretty nice. Where are you from? 
What have you done to our princess that she placed you to us? Shannon realized that no one was going to beat and tear him into little pieces at once, so he smiled slightly. So, I came from the princess. I'm her husband. Oh, really? No way. Shannon reached into his pocket, where he had always carried his passport lately. He knew that he could get lost when he was drunk, so he had it with him. And accidentally, he put a small wedding photo in his pocket along with his passport. And then he decided not to take it out. He always had it with him, like a talisman. The women looked at the photo and shook their heads. Then they gave him back his passport and the photo. Then it's completely incomprehensible what you're doing here. Shannon grinned. That's how my wife re-educates me. She wants me to dance to her tune. One of the prisoners looked at him thoughtfully. Yeah, you smell of alcohol so bad that we can get drunk. My husband didn't want me to tell him what to do, too. He didn't like when I didn't let him drink. And where is he now? She waved her hand, stepped back, and sat down at the table. Shannon looked at her, confused. Actually, he thought that since they were not going to beat him, they would all talk together about what a bad wife he had, but the conversation took another turn. The second woman pulled him by the sleeve. Come on, at least have some tea. You must be feeling unwell. I guess nobody's going to bother us till morning, so you can relax. My name is Ruby, and this is Helen. She nodded at the one sitting at the table, Judith and Charlotte. She pointed to the other two women. Shannon. They sat down at the table. The man was given a mug of tea, which looked more like a clear brew. He took a sip and asked Helen, Where's your husband? I'm sorry, but you never said. Helen turned to him. Husband? There is no husband anymore. He's gone. I'm in prison, and my children are in an orphanage. Why are you in prison? I'll tell you if you're interested. My husband started drinking all of a sudden. We had been together for ten years. At first, I couldn't understand what was wrong. But then I found out that his colleague hooked him on playing cards for money. And where the cards are, there is alcohol. I begged him and cried so hard. I was on my knees. I scolded him and told him he wouldn't get any good out of it all. And he got drunk and told me every time. Shut up, woman. I'm a man. I know what I'm doing. And then, he also lost a lot when he was playing cards drunk. So much so, that they started threatening us. He didn't say anything to me. He just drank every day. So he wouldn't feel so scared and wouldn't have to think about his debt. That's how he died, from some bad alcohol. And then they came to me. I mean, to me and the kids. They said that he was in debt. That we should move out and give the apartment to them. I immediately told them to go away. One of them grabbed my son, Simon. He pressed him and said that if I don't agree, we're all dead. As I saw my son's eyes full of terror, I lost my mind. I grabbed the knife I had been shedding cabbage with. This guy immediately fell down, and there was another one by the door. I went to him. Anyway, I will see all my children when they are adults. And even then, only if they want to see me at all. Shannon sat in silence. It was one thing to read such a story somewhere and not believe it, or rather to think that it was made up, but another thing to be here face to face. The women were silent for a while, and then the other one spoke, Charlotte. I'm here because my husband was drinking too. Although, of course, it was my own fault. Shannon looked at her. When I met him, he was already drinking. At first, he seemed to drink not so much. Then he started stealing money from the family. And then he started stealing everything. Then there was nothing left. And he started beating me out of anger. I endured. I endured for a long time. But one day I couldn't stand it. Shannon sat there and didn't know what to say. What could he say? Some trivial words. Silly. For some reason, he did not feel like drinking either. Then he heard someone crying. The youngest girl in the cell was crying. Ruby said in a low voice. Judith was unlucky. She wasn't guilty of anything. Wasn't guilty. But now she's a prisoner too. Shannon asked quietly. What happened to her? Husband too? No. She didn't even have a chance to get married. It was not right to ask her under what article she was in prison. But from further conversation, it became clear that her mother died and her father brought another woman into the house. They drank every day and got into a lot of debt. And then they gave her away as payment for the debts. But Judith hit the man they gave her to over the head with some statue. It wasn't the girl's fault. The man survived, but they put her in prison for years. 
But how could that be? Self-defense and a state of effect. Ruby looked at him. You're just like a lawyer. Who would investigate all this? Prove it. Where would she get the money for a lawyer? And that man was money. And a lot of money. So he got his revenge. Shannon wrinkled his nose. A thought running through his head. Only he didn't know what it was yet. Now she seemed to know what he was thinking. Judith, can I talk to you for a minute? The girl wiped her nose and walked over. Judith, I used to be a lawyer. I wouldn't say it was for a long time. I quit that job out of stupidity. Can you tell me everything that happened to you? More importantly, name anyone who knows anything about it. I won't promise anything, but I'll try. I'll do my best to help you. The girl looked at him in surprise, then at Ruby. Apparently, Ruby was in charge here. She in turn looked at Shannon. Are you sure of what you're saying? You'll get a girl's hopes up. She's been through so much in her life. I told you. I'll do my best. I'll try. Melanie felt very nervous. She was beginning to realize what a foolish thing she had done. She had done it on edge. Now Shannon would be completely mad at her, and he would never stop drinking. Several times, she was going to tell them to bring him in, but then she stopped herself, wanted to say that again, and so on till the morning. Finally, taking Edward and a couple of guards, she moved toward the cell. What the hell was she going to see? What if Shannon was showing off and provoking? Those women could tear him to pieces. It was quiet in the cell. She stood there for a while and said in a hoarse voice, Open the door. When the door swung open, everyone froze. Shannon was sitting at the table. All the inmates were around him, and they were having a very peaceful conversation. They were even smiling for some reason. Shannon turned around. Oh, Melanie, hi. She couldn't say anything. Her tongue was just numb with shock. What's actually going on here? Shannon stood up and walked out of the cell, waving goodbye to everyone and getting a lot of good wishes from them. Melanie could see that Edward and the guards were no less surprised. This cell was considered the most dangerous. Shannon. Melanie, there's no time now. Let's go home. I need a shave and a bath. There's a person I need to find. And he took her down the hall. Honestly, Melanie didn't recognize her husband. He hadn't had any alcohol in a week. She didn't understand what was going on. No, indeed, she was very happy. But what had happened? Finally, she couldn't stand it anymore and asked. Shan, can you tell me what happened there and where you go all the time? He turned to her. Sure. There's a young girl in your prison. They put her in prison unfairly, ruined a girl's life. Her father should be in prison as well as the man she didn't kill. I'm looking to see if there's anything I can do to help. Melanie stood for a minute then rushed over to him. Shannon, Shan! He put his arms around her. I'm sorry, Melanie. I'm sorry I've really been a big problem for you. Thank you for getting my head straight. Six months later, there was a trial. After Shannon gathered a bunch of witnesses and found a doctor who had been bribed to put the girl in prison. Judith was released into the courtroom, but her father and that man were taken into custody. Shannon was there as a lawyer trying hard to implicate them in human trafficking. Judith was sobbing so hard, she couldn't even get up from the bench right away. Shannon rushed over to her and helped her. An elderly woman came up to them, crying, and Judith, recognizing her, rushed to embrace her. It turned out that the old woman was her grandmother who lived in the village and didn't even know at the time that her granddaughter had been imprisoned. Judith hugged her with both arms and burst into tears. Shannon and Melody walked out of the courtroom. The woman looked at her husband and said, I've never been prouder of anyone than I am of you. Shannon smiled, but before he could answer, a boy ran up to them and slipped them a package. Here, they asked me to give you this, and he immediately ran away. Shannon carefully opened the package and a piece of paper fell out. It said, Restaurant, the fireside, table for two, all expenses paid. Person respects those who keep their word. Shannon laughed. Well, Melanie, you and I are going to have dinner at the restaurant, a gift from your charges. She asked. You can't refuse, can you? Are you out of your mind? It's from the bottom of their hearts.